Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today, I have just some absolutely terrifying encounters and some very interesting video clips to share with you all. Before we get into that, though, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. The merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button. takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I've taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's upload, shall we? Today's first encounter is a subscriber submission. Jeff, I had been in contact with an ex-military personnel who wanted to share two separate occasions and what he believes were the same creature over an eight-week period of time in the 80s. Both happened while he was training up in the hills close to Holcomb. This is only a short trip from the forest of Boland and has many different habitats. With high wind-swept hills and low valleys, where it's wooded and damp, an ideal area for MOD and the land is posted for mines and artillery. The guy said he's very wary about sharing these experiences with me and will only share some of the information. He went on to add that on both nights he was on exercise and was in position where he was away from the main action, about 150 to 200 yards on the outer perimeter in a guard position. He was well enough away from the heavy use of blanks and flashbangs that he describes it being very noisy. Lots of action and noise. He was hoping it'd be over quickly as it was cold and damp and they lie flat in the underbrush which is wet and damp. The first occasion the person was with another guy and they were both wearing their camouflage of course and doing their best to stay still and concealed. Tucked up in the grass they both noticed movement off in the distance and became aware of a foul stench in the wind which got worse as it came closer. They were hunkered down, not knowing what to do in case it was some kind of test or trick to get them to leave their position, so they stayed put. And it was at the point that the stench was almost too much to bear, and they noticed a very large figure approaching them in the darkness. They at first thought it was someone with a huge pack or kit, as the shape and color was all wrong, until they realized that it was not clothed at all, it couldn't see us, he said, and I am certain it was unaware that we were both there, but it was so hard not to jump up and run off. It was dark, and we couldn't make out anything too much until the thing hit the tripwire, and the flash went off, and we could see it for a split second. It turned to run off, and we opened fire, even though the guns were loaded with blanks. The creature was large, dark, and huge across its chest. I believe it had no idea we were there. We had to stay put until we got the coast was clear, and then I couldn't stop asking questions if it was a setup or part of the exercise. The next time we got some free time, a small group of us set out to see if we could follow this thing's path and find it. But other than strange prints that were smeared, we didn't find anything. It worried me, I'll be honest, so I definitely was not happy when we had to do a second incident, night maneuvers, and it was a similar situation, except it was winter now, and there was snow on the ground. I was with a female soldier, and we were both lying down on the ground in full camo, and again, about 200 yards from the action. It was almost the exact same situation, I couldn't stop playing it over in my head. I was pretty scared that it was going to happen again. As I'm thinking this, I was greeted by a foul odor from the road below us this time. 
It was snowing, and a large, dark creature was coming up the hill towards us. I was so scared I shouted, and like an idiot made myself known. It looked in our direction. The camouflage must have worked, as it looked in our direction, but didn't see us. And it started to move closer still. When it was thirty feet away, it pulled up. As if it sensed us, it snarled and took off running up a hill that was very steep. Once again, you couldn't make out much, just the size of this thing. And the way the creature moved, it cleared that hill in three seconds flat, I'd say. This time my colleague didn't stay put. She was after it. It was easy to see where it went due to the snow. We tracked it and it took us ten minutes at least just to get up the hill that this thing had climbed in a flash. There were smudged tracks, but there was no sign of this creature. We returned to our spot and waited to return to camp. Alright guys, today's first video clip is what appears to be a driver. Um, apparently it hits what they thought was a deer or possibly a human. They are searching for it because they had no idea what they hit. They seem to be very worried about their car more so than whatever they hit until they see something come chasing after them in their uh, backup camera. Check it out. Hit something. Hope it didn't hurt the car. Somewhere. Is that right there? Oh my gosh, go. Oh my. Like I've stated before, I don't know if this video clip is 100% legit, but either way, <laughs> seeing something like that in your backup camera is absolutely horrifying. Even if it's a person that just out of the blue comes running up to your car that you have no idea they're there. Definitely a freaky clip. The creature or whatever it is, is huge though, so I'm... I'm really not sure on this, and uh, I hope you guys can formulate your own opinions on to today's second encounter. I live in North Pakistan, and it's a lot like the northern United States or Central Europe in terms of environment. It's predominantly Islamic country with a Hindu background, and we have a lot of superstitious beliefs such as witches, demons, as well as witchcraft, magic, etc., I'm aware that skinwalkers are native to North America. I don't live in the countryside, but I have a farm that I visit almost every weekend. It's less agriculture and more pleasure. The farm is located in a community of farms, and to the north is a large patch of unclaimed forest, maybe 200 acres. The forest is populated with fox, coyote, porcupine, and wild boar, apart from feral dog and such. I've been doing a lot of hunting in my time there, and I've never experienced anything like this before. I used to hunt at night alone quite a bit prior to this incident. I was hunting at night, it was about one in the morning, which is around the time the wild boar are most active, being nocturnal. I shot an adult female hog, probably 3.50 a.m. Since it was getting late, I decided to remove the body the next morning. Most Pakistani are Muslim, so we do not eat them and we hunt boar because they have a habit of messing with crops and livestock. We have to remove the body legally and move it to a government dumping ground. I placed a marker and went back home. Nothing creepy happened at all on the way home. 
The next day, at around noon, I'm heading back into the woods to remove the bodies. I forgot to mention, I shot a few other males, but in different places. The female was the last. I made my way to the location of the female and started getting creeped out. The woods had gone silent. No wind, birds, insects, nothing. I started to get goosebumps and was generally very uncomfortable, feeling like I was being watched. When I got to the body, I saw in horror that this thing had been torn in half, with one half lying a good 15 feet from the other. There was dried blood all over the place, but it wasn't the blood itself that freaked me out. It was the fact that there was blood at all. Blood dries up in veins of dead animals within 10 minutes of death, meaning that whatever did this had done it within 5 to 10 minutes of me leaving the body. The body had not been eaten, and there were no scavenger feastings, which was strange to say the least. I decided to get out of there as fast as I could. I unholstered my pistol. I didn't have my rifle with me at the time. I started to speed walk out of there, reciting any Islamic verse I could to ward off evil. I'm agnostic, by the way, but at that time I was praying to all gods. After ten minutes of walking, that uneasy feeling wore off. The sound again returned to the forest. It was like a switch had been clicked. I got home and just kind of blocked it all out. This happened a couple of months ago. A couple of days ago, there was a development, though. About a week or so ago, a child from one of the workers at the neighboring farms had went missing. He was nine. Two days ago, my dad told me they had found his decaying, mutilated corpse in the woods not more than 50 yards from where my incident had taken place. My dad still doesn't know about my incident. The child's face had been ripped off. His left leg was lying away from him. The police were called and the place was blocked off, but this being Pakistani police, they chalked it up to a wild animal. The owner of the farm paid for an autopsy at a private hospital and it came back inconclusive. All they knew was the kid died of blood loss. The body had not been touched by scavengers, despite it being there for a few days, and was intact apart from the face and leg. The person that found the body, another guy from the neighboring farm who was out hunting, said he felt very uneasy before he found the body. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for all this, and I'm probably jumping to conclusions. The events are most likely not connected. However, I will not be going in those woods alone again, and not at night even with somebody. Today's second video is what appears to be, or what they're calling, a crawler. It is very shocking. I, once again, don't stand by it 100%. I will tell you, it is a bit of a jump scare, though. Hello, YouTube. Um, I'm back outside again. I don't know... If any of you saw my YouTube videos that I uploaded yesterday, um, I caught something, I don't know what it was, on camera last night in my forest. And now I'm out front in the front of my house. So I heard some noises out here just uh, maybe five, ten minutes ago. thought I should grab the camera again just in case it's a trespasser. I couldn't tell what it was last night. I booked it. I was scared. I mean, I can hear something, I can hear something down there. Hello? Hello? Oh my god, what the heck? Oh my god! What the Today's third experience. Hey Jeff, what's going on? My name's Josh and this is my experience. I was born in Alabama, and for the past 30 years I've lived in a number of rural communities outside of Birmingham. I spent most of my childhood roaming and exploring those woods and mountains, although I've never flat out seen a cryptid. I've had things happen that I look back on now that makes me wonder, and I say now because of an incident that happened to me right at the end of this winter. I had bought a new 22 Browning pistol, and I was going out just about every night deep into the woods to shoot beer bottles that littered the trails. There are two main trails. One was an access road that ran alongside the interstate for putting up, taking down, or just maintaining billboards. And the other was a really long trail that led to a clear foundation and a parking lot. That, in of itself, is odd to me because of how remote it was, given all the spent shells 
in the area, I assumed that it used to be some sort of hunting lodge or a club that was torn down. On the night leading up to what happened, I had killed two hare and a deer for sport. Shame on me, I know. I had seen countless more. The remains would always be gone the following night, which I attributed to coyote and other wild animal. Even though I found it a bit strange for an entire deer carcass to disappear without a trace overnight. Well, one evening, I got the feeling like I was being watched. I looked in the direction from which I thought I was being watched, and all I saw was what looked like two orange security lights side by side, way off in the distance. So I kept walking. After only a few steps, I could hear leaves crunching 30 to 40 yards off the trail in the woods and up the hillside pacing me in the same area where I felt that gaze. When I looked back in that direction, the two street lights I had seen were now clearly red glowing eyes, just staring at me. I could now see a branch directly above the eyes, which gave me something to tell how close or far away it was, and that it looked to be about three and a half to four feet tall. I assumed it was just a deer, but couldn't figure out how the eyes were reflecting with no light source. When I pointed my flashlight away, or why I could see both eyes simultaneously when you typically see one or the other, at times since deer eyes are on each side of their heads. I started up the trail after this animal, being sure to keep an eye on it. When I turned to look a few steps, it was gone, no galloping or leaves crunching or fading away. Just a few brisk steps and then nothing. When I walked up the hill to where whatever had been standing, I saw that branch that looked to be three or four feet off the ground from where I was standing. No, it was closer to nine or ten feet off the ground. After analyzing the surrounding area and the event at length, I left scratching my head because whatever I had seen was either an optical illusion, which I couldn't account for, or some creature I only caught a glimpse of, standing no less than eight feet tall with glowing red eyes. I was always the type to poo-poo on any kind of cryptid stories at that point, but when it happens to you personally, it's a whole different story. There was no odor associated with it, which I know often accompanies these kind of sightings. I find that strange. Today's third video clip is a hiker out in the woods with his camera, and he catches a very, very strange sighting. Give it a look-see. Today's fourth experience. It was the summer going into my junior year of high school, so if I'm doing the math correctly, it would have been 1994. I had signed up for girls choir and was going on a summer trip with the entire choir, choral singers group for typical vocal works and trust building courses you would expect on such a trip. The camping part landed us at a Boy Scout camp, Camp Odakuta located in Birmingham area of Wisconsin. It was a very odd weekend all around, to be perfectly honest. It started out simple enough. Choir practice all day. It was raining anyhow, so no one really minded. On a 30-minute break, I went out to stretch my legs along with my then fiancé. Despite the fact it was raining, I opted to go and dance on a gently sloping grassy hill behind the mess hall. It was a warm rain after all. 
I had unsuccessfully tried to drag my other half out at the time. It wasn't until later, when we were finished up with our practice for the evening, that all the magic began. As we are leaving the mess hall to get ready for supper, we emerge into a beautiful gold fog. Yeah, I do mean gold. It was enveloping everything. It was gorgeous. It wrapped around you like a warm blanket, despite my being chilled and having drenched myself earlier. Supper went without a hitch. It wasn't until the exceedingly high bonfire had to have been a solid six and a half to seven feet tall that the sighting happened. I was sitting on a log bench, with my back pointed somewhat between the circle of trees surrounding us and the hill leading up to the mess hall, my fiancé seated right beside me, to my right. We had been sitting there for a bit, and there was an usual horseplay and shenanigans going on from the other choir members around the fire, stories, laughing, chatter. I could feel someone, or so I thought, someone behind me. I assumed another choir member wanting to play a practical joke, trying to scare or startle me. So, wanting to catch them off their guard, I spun around quite quickly to catch them. There was no one there. Not even close enough to have jumped back out of the way, just darkness. Or was there? You guessed it. That's when I caught my first glimpse, hiding in the tree line. I am guessing at least six feet, based on what I would later observe, the outline of a pitch-black ear against the edge of one of the trees. It was the outline of a wolf, but far too tall for the height that a normal wolf would have been. The fur, when I say it was black, I mean it was so black that no light escaped it. It was like a black hole black. Even the night sky with its stars seemed brighter. There wasn't even a shine to its fur. I also remember thinking that it had an odd amount of thickness to its coat, as it could have been a winter coat despite the fact that we were in summer. I couldn't see the whole body, but the ears were much more of the equilateral shape versus the stories I hear of now that are talking about the isosceles triangles with tufts atop. Well, now, at this point, I thought my eyes are playing tricks on me. It's dark. I can't possibly see what I think I'm seeing, right? Periodically, throughout the night, I would turn around, now trying to be sly about it. And, just so I knew I wasn't imagining things, I was given proof. You know that look of light catching the eye of an animal at night? That reddish-orange-yellow and greenish-marble look the eyes get? Yeah, that's exactly what I saw, two of them in the light of the bonfire. I think it was what I see in dogman groups referred to as eye shine. And not just once, but several times. The more I turned back to look, the more it seemed to shrink into the shadows. But if I didn't turn as often, if I gave it a chance to get comfortable, it would be out a bit more. As you can imagine, I had a near death grip on my fiancé's arm by now. I drew his attention to it. He said he saw it as well, but I think he may have been trying to just calm my nerves at the time. Now I had to figure out how the hell I was going to go back to the girl's cabin because... I knew damn well the chaperones were not going to let my fiancé escort me, and what's more, I didn't want him going to the boys' cabin on his own. I finally found another girl to head back with. We raced off to the girls' cabin together holding hands, so one would not get left behind by accident if they tripped. She hadn't seen what I had seen, but she had a creepy feeling about something, and neither of us were taking the chances. We made it back to the cabin without incident, but after slamming the door behind us, we both realized how bad we had to pee. So now we are faced with a choice, wet ourselves, never going to live that down, and there's no way we could hold it until morning or suck it up and head over to the outhouse. Well, option two was elected. Problem when we reached the outhouse was that there was only one toilet. Neither of us wanted to wait outside alone in the dark. We made a pact that... One would use the facilities while the other held the door shut from the inside while keeping our eyes shut, after which was another race back to the cabin. 
Exhausted from all the running and the stress of the experience, it didn't take long for me to fall asleep. The next morning, I opted to get dressed and found new courage in the light of the sun. I probably had a death wish back then, but hell, didn't we all as teens? I went strolling down to the bowl where the fire pit was. As I approached, I could smell some god-awful smelling scat. Later, I had someone try to tell me that the smell was a backed-up grease trap. And the visual scat I saw was musty mushrooms. Well, I say BS. I know what musty mushrooms look like. And I know what scat looks like. And I am quite all familiar with a foul diarrhea from canine smells. And let me tell you that this that was some major intestinal upset. I still remember the sickening grayish-brown green color. And on occasion the smell enters my nose through my memory. The scat wasn't the only physical evidence either. By the pines it had been seen by in the tree line, the wood chips were packed down like something heavy had been there for quite some time. Curious thing, though. There were bushes slash shrubs directly behind them. So how on earth did I see this thing move closer and further from me at night without making any noise? And as I thought about it, what kept from chasing me and the entire choir mate when we ran back to the cabin a live animal would have given chase was it is it a creature from the other side okay so pondering that i decided to stroll down to the narrow pathway pointing to the boy's cabin and see my bow forget about the fact that it was dense tree line on either side yeah like i said i think i had a death wish dumb teen that i was or perhaps I just thought I was invincible, like every other teen out there. Anyhow, as I approached the cabin, there was little sign of life. Of course, they were all still sleeping. After waiting for around five minutes or so, and realizing no one was coming out to me, to even inquire if my guy was up, I decided to head up the path that had bordered on my left side by a small hill that stretched nearly the entire way up the path. Shortly after passing that, shortly after passing from sight of the boy's cabin, I saw a red orb. It was about the size of a volleyball, dense red, and in the center fading toward the opposite outside edge. Floating out into the gravel path ahead of me, about a head height, it had come from the left. Now mind you, it was not perfectly still. It kind of did hover motion in its spot as it moved. My dumbass decided to follow it. A minute or two up the path, it stopped. And even though it was an orb, you could tell it turned around to stare at me as if to say, WTF do you want? And why are you following me? Despite there being no exchange of words, it turned around and continued on until the gravel stretch we were on T-boned into another gravel stretch, giving away to a dead end into the tree line. The orb proceeded into the tree line and dissipated right in front of my eyes. It wasn't the only time I had been at camp, but it was the only time I had ever experienced anything like what I saw. And my significant other at the time had been up there many times in his life with Boy Scouts and never experienced anything like that. No, although the camp does circulate a story amongst its attendees about a buckhorned monster and another rabid raccoon that had been killed not far from where we saw the orb in a in a storage shed that was actually bars in the hillside it looked more like a medieval cell than a storage shed at this point i had never heard of a dog man so my mind thought werewolf i've been very interested in real wolves and connected with dogs canines since i was in the womb i'll also admit I've been obsessed with a variety of things, paranormal and supernatural, from the time I was young. But I was focused on ESP, ghosts, etc. At that point in my life, I certainly had even thought if a rare werewolf was real, or a dogman could exist. Nevertheless, I believe this and a number of other properly placed events, entities in my life, both before and after this incident, led me even deeper into wanting to learn more about these things that go bump in the night, as well as deepen my connection with the natural world around us. I joined a paranormal group about three years ago 
but decided I preferred sleepover the average attention seeker we come across plus I never had a chance to do any cryptid investigations with the group although I did part on good terms so we keep in touch with anything they think might be able to help me or me vice versa met some pretty cool people though it was interesting to note that the Beast of Bray Road incidents are not far from their being seen in Elkhorn or Walworth counties, so it's not a stretch to think maybe it was the same sort of creature. However, the one I saw did not have glowing red eyes, just eyes lit by light at night. I did share the experience once. Anyway, that was my experience. You can take it for what it's worth, believe it or not. There's no proof I can furnish beyond my memories, which I know is not enough for most. Today's fourth video clip is what appears to be a Bigfoot on a hill, and it looks like it does not like this person videotaping it or whatever, video recording it and uh, throws a rock at this guy. Check it out. What the? And tonight's final encounter. I was hiking along the Au Sable River in Michigan during the summer of 1999. This is in the counties of Oscada, Alcana, and Isaco. I remember one of the most scariest encounters with the wilderness. While walking east down along the river, around an hour prior to dusk, I heard what my ears to be a wolf howl. I had seen wolf prints and seen wolves in my home in Long Lake, Michigan, but never had I heard a howl so deep and almost human-like in my life. I got spooked and set up camp and made a fire larger than most due to my fear. At dusk, I heard that howling getting closer. Directly across the river, I had heard stories of wolfmen from native powwows and in my family folklore covering the whole United States but never had I personally seen what I saw that night or the next day. That night, after eating beef and barley stew from my canned collection, I lied down by the fire with my huge folding knife closely gripped by my chest. I was watching and listening to the surrounding wood line 30 minutes. When the average night noises stopped to tell me, it meant two things. Either something had spooked the local animals, and that it made me very uneasy. I looked out away from the fire and shot the fire away from my eyes using the unarmed hand. I looked across the river, which was only a hundred meters across from my fire. That's when I saw the most unnerving sight ever. On the sand was a creature standing, maybe larger than the average sow black bear, with black fur, large long skull, and yellow reflective eyes like a wolf. I closed my eyes and hoped I was imagining things, and then it gave out a howl again. I opened my eyes and it ran back up the bank and disappeared into the night. As it ran, it didn't run on all fours like a bear or a wolf. Unlike the local Bigfoot, it wasn't upright like a human or primate. I was so scared that I had slept the rest of the night in a tree 20 feet off the ground. It took me three hours and praying to ease my fear so I could sleep. All right, folks, some just absolutely terrifying experiences and some very interesting video clips. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. 
I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is honestly what makes this channel continue to grow and go, and what makes it a place where people want to share their theories, ideas, and experiences without judgment or ridicule, simply treated with the respect that they deserve. It's all on you, the community you have created in the comment section. Thank you so much. And with that, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. And they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for the truth. And God bless.